regional Australia is in the middle of a food revolution. Our little towns are overflowing with the freshest produce and most exciting cuisine. And it's our job to explore these places with the caravan in tow. We'll find delicious food, meet colourful local characters and show you the most beautiful places to make camp. Join Chef Macca, Tim and me, Emma, as we embark on our RV Daily foodie trails. This week we've hitched up the easy trails and we're exploring the beautiful Sunshine Coast hinterland. These lush green hills behind the coast are a treasure trove full of amazing produce, bustling markets and incredible foodie gems. It's a caravan traveller's subtropical paradise. This week's foodie trail sees us venturing from colourful Yumundi to the charming country town of Kenilworth before finishing up at vibrant Mullaney. You know what makes me happy about this part of the world? It's the Sunshine Coast. It just makes you happy. Sunshine on a rainy day. Well, I believe we're going to uh, your Monday. That's a new one on me. How about you guys? M and I are going to your Monday Market, uh, where we're going to uh, indulge in some of the local delights. Uh, it's it's the biggest art and craft market in Australia, um, and you get people from all through this region come down and uh, it's just a kaleidoscope of colour and movement and um, I'm really looking forward to it. Sunshine on a rainy day. First up, our foodie trail expedition begins in beautiful Yamundi. This slice of the Sunshine Coast hinterland has an impressive spread of restaurants and cafes and world famous markets, which Chef Macca and I will get to check out very soon. But before we start exploring, Tim wants to give our rams some TLC. First, a little spritz, then a scrub down dance, and finishing off with a good old power soak wiggle. Right, now the rams are squeaky clean and it's time to head to our first campsite, just 10 minutes down the road at the Kuroi's No Worries RV Stopover. This isn't your usual RV stopover. Nestled in lush green bushland and surrounded by lovely landscape gardens, there's plenty of space to park your caravan for a rest or unhitch and explore your Mundi. Now that camp is all set up, Chef Macker is off to meet a very skilled Yumundi taste maker. Lee is the brains and muscle behind Dragon Roti, a popular market stall specialising in the tasty Malaysian cuisine called Roti Chennai. Lee's rotis sell out without fail every weekend. So, in preparation, he makes 160 litres of curry and 160 roti dough balls. And today, Chef Macca has stopped by to give Lee a hand. Tell you what, I reckon every house should have one of these. Then you could have all of your family over, their family, their family's family, and their family's family's family. Now it's over to the roti station. To make roti, first you need to divide the dough into very precise segments, cover them in butter, and let them sit for a few hours or overnight. Yes. And then you're ready to spin a roti. Gonna give it a go? Yeah. I think I have to, but somewhere I think I'm, up, I'm, gotta, I'm gotta, working up to a fall on this one. Gotta give it a go. Only time <laughs> will tell, Chef Macca. The next day, Chef Macca and I head to the Umundi markets, both with slightly different agendas. I'm off to explore and find some goodies, and of course, Chef Macca has only one thing on his mind. Aha, uh -huh. he's just up here. Rotty time. <laughs> hey Lee. Hey mate, how are you? I'm really well in yourself. Oh, I can't shake your hand, it's super Don't shiny. Me. <laughs> so you saw me making them yesterday. Yeah. This is how they end up. See, they're like rice paper. Yeah, I mean, the thinner you get these type of things, the better they're gonna taste. Yep. Learning to refine the art of roti tossing can take years. Lee was lucky enough to learn under a very skilled man back in Malaysia, where he worked for free, learning how to flick his wrist and spin the dough just right. So I wonder how Chef Mac is going to go. You want to try and make one? I'll give it a go. Let's go. It's now or never, mother. So you want your you want your right hand over and your left hand under. So you're going to be like this reversed. Oh, this hand's flat on there, and then. <laughs> You can see how tricky it is, uh, and it looks so easy. <laughs> okay, so, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 
you got to try and keep it in the circle instead of putting it down. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I'm not going to give up my day job. So clearly Chef Macca hasn't got what it takes, but he can definitely still enjoy Lee's handiwork. That's first class, Lee. Thanks, Macca. Absolutely amazing. On the other side of the Yamundi markets, I'm picking up a few goodies for camp tonight. There's nothing like the atmosphere of a market. It's like a melting pot where loads of local producers and artisans get together and it's just a one-stop shop, basically. You come here, you can get a full taste of the region you're exploring. I love visiting local markets. Any cream or something? Oh, yeah, go on, ice cream. Mmm. And before your bones are cold, they'll be fighting over your gold. Mmm, that is beautiful, really sweet. Everything I dreamed it would be. Thanks, Gary. Cheers. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Perfect place to stock up on souvenirs for your family, presents, you name it. Or just something for yourself. You probably deserve it. Take it with you when you go. When you're gone, someone else gets all your dough. You had nothing when you came, and you go out just the same. And you can't take, take it with you when you go. No, 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 no. So you might as well chuck it all in here and I'll look after it. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, holding the fort back at camp, Tim has a few insights about RV friendly towns. We've been travelling through some fantastic RV friendly towns on our adventures on foodie trails. Now you might wonder what that sign means. Well, at its most basic, what it means is an RV friendly town has to offer a dump point, access to water, parking, somewhere to camp up overnight. But that's as a bare minimum. In places like where we are now, like Yamundi down the road, they have nights where they have like poetry and happy hour and nibbles, things like that. So even go that extra mile to make the traveling public feel even that bit more special. So wherever you are on your adventures, look out for the RV friendly town sign or look it up online and you'll find that you'll pretty much be guaranteed a solid welcome. For more information on RV friendly towns, head to rvdaily.com.au. To cap off a magnificent day, I'm taking over dinner duties using the freshly selected goodies I picked up from the markets. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers fellas. Thank series. you for feeding us. Well, to my two uncles. <laughs> my th to your two elderly uncles. <laughs> Coming up, Tim satisfies a giant donut craving. Oh, yeah. And we unhitch the vans in a truly breathtaking destination. The drive out from Yamundi takes us through gorgeous countryside. And in just 40 minutes, we're in the Mary Valley at our next campsite, Bluff Creek Camping Ground. This privately operated campsite is situated on 100 acres of rolling grounds, offering plenty of space to stretch out and take in the valley. After a quick camp setup, Tim and I are off to explore the rustic town of Kenilworth. This sweet country town may only have a population of 300, but they haven't let that stop them from being a foodie destination. First, Tim is off to explore a family-owned bakery making larger-than-life delights. Three years ago, this country bakery was transformed into something extraordinary after new owner Jenna Sanders made a one kilo donut posted it on social media and received 3.5 million hits. The Donut Hall of Fame, all around me, all over the walls are plaques honouring those brave enough to tackle a one kilo donut so that everyone can see the gluttony that has taken place in this establishment. And today, Tim's challenge is to learn the secret to making such a gluttonous donut. I got a baby, look. Okay. Since Jenna's donut post went viral, they've had to custom build fryers that can make over a thousand regular donuts and 100 one kilogram donuts on an average weekend. And that was our original fryer that we started with. We were starting at six o'clock at night, working through till three o'clock in the afternoon, just frying donuts all day. People were waiting for two hours here with a ticket to get their kilo donut. Now that we're friends, secret ingredients. We use nomadic eggs and butter. What's a nomadic egg? <laughs> They actually come from a little uh, farm just down the road. Yeah. And they have their own little caravan they stay in. They go out and they wander during the day and they lay their eggs and they go and sleep in the caravan at night. 
Nomadic chickens, nomadic eggs. They're caravanners. I love that. Now to decorating. First, coat in caramel and chocolate, then sprinkles, and top it off with caramel chocolate. Oh. And after successfully completing his challenge, Tim waddles back to camp with enough donuts to last a lifetime. Oh, yeah. On the other side of town, I'm on a little mission of my own. Something a little more, well, savoury. Today I'm meeting Peter from Cedar Creek Farm Bush Foods. Thanks. Peter specialises in making mouth-watering sauces, jams and condiments, all made with Australian native fruits, herbs and spices. And right now, Peter is in the midst of cooking his famous mountain pepper relish. The basic ingredients are beautiful, really, really ripe tomatoes. OK. The three main ingredients to this recipe are tomatoes, onions and apples, which are all thrown into a mincer, then cooked down for a few hours. Mm, it's a bubbling cauldron of deliciousness. And within that bubbling cauldron, oh, Peter throws in cumin, and his special ingredient. The native pepper berries from Tasmania, these are my favourite native spice. Right. I specialise in Australian bush foods and this is, to me, the best of them. OK. We're not talking organic, we're talking grown in nature where they're supposed to grow. It's very much like Sichuan pepper. OK, so can I just taste this? Absolutely, yeah. It's not going to knock my socks off or anything? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Just in the good way. Not at all. Mmm. Yeah. Peter loves cooking with native Australian spices a dried desert tomato called a kudra, a punchy powdered and dried desert lime, and a roast ground wattle seed. Oh, that smells beautiful. It's, it's used as a, as a coffee substitute sometimes. The moment of truth, it's tasting time. Mm. Oh yeah, that is absolutely delicious. No preservative, nothing artificial. Possibly able to take a few jars away from my fellow campers. Mm, but I've shown you the secret recipe. I've got to kill you now, so I'm afraid <laughs> oh, you can't. No. And <laughs> Sorry they never that. saw her again. <laughs> of course you can. Thankfully, they did see me again, and with delicious jars of goodness mm. in hand. Meanwhile, back at camp, Chef Macca has a useful tip when it comes to your portable fridge. An essential thing to have on any good caravanning holiday these days is a portable freezer fridge. And what we've got here is we've got a dual zone fridge. So you can have fridge only, fridge only. You can have one as a fridge and one as a freezer, or both as a freezer. And the benefit of that is that depending upon where you're going and for what length of time, you can just change the fridge settings to suit your needs. And another really cool thing, just to pardon a pun, is it has a supporting app, which means that while you're driving along, you're connected to your fridge and you can see what's going on with your battery charge, the fridge temperature and your freezer temperature. So really, it's just a great insurance policy to make sure that you continue to have a fabulous holiday. The next morning, we all try to tear ourselves away from this idyllic campsite. I don't want to leave yet. My socks are brighter than the golden orb what fills the sky. Thankfully, as always, our vans are stocked with caffeinated virtue to help Thank us get you. a wriggle on. How good is that? Coming up next, we head to our final destination, Mullaney, where Tim and I indulge in the local dairy. Mm. And it's happy hour time. <laughs> On the road again, and we're heading through incredible open roads and lush green pastures, with our final destination and our happy hour party taking place in Mullaney. This charismatic town lies in picture postcard dairy country, with panoramic views of the Glasshouse Mountains and the ocean, plus a wide variety of cafes, restaurants and artisan food makers. But first, we're unhitching at our happy hour campsite, just a short 15 minutes down the road at the peaceful Landsborough Pines Holiday Park. While the boys finish setting up for happy hour, I'm off to meet a local food producer creating award-winning gelati. Norman and Helen are the husband and wife team behind Mullaney Food Co which is a cafe, fromagerie, and most notably, a world-class gelati emporium. 
So this is basically milk, cream and stabilizers. We source our milk and cream directly from the dairy here in, in Mullaney. Single origin Guernsey herd. What's unique about Guernsey milk? So it's, it's higher in butter fat, it's higher in proteins. So it's a much richer uh, milk than let's say a Frisian. The black and white cow being the Frisian, high volume, lower butter fat milk. Oh, that's beautiful. It's already quite sweet. Yeah, it's going to get better. And get better it does. Norman takes that delectable high fat base, churns and freezes it down to minus five degrees, then mixes in a combination of fresh produce. For this batch, local ginger and crushed macadamias. Norman Helen haven't always been gelati pioneers. Before moving to Mullaney, they spent years working in the corporate world. But after deciding they needed a green change, they purchased a small cafe and gelati shop on the main street of Mullaney. You know, the feedback we get is it's as good as anything anyone's ever tasted here or in Italy. Gosh, that uh, is pretty good feedback. <laughs> it, it is, and, and, and we, all, we seem to have very happy customers. Knowing that, I had to pop over to the cafe and try their award-winning chocolate gelato. Mmm. <laughs> Seriously. Smooth is the word. That is beautiful. It's like velvet. Back at camp, Chef Macker has been inspired by his experience at the Yamundi markets and is cooking up a curry storm in preparation for our happy hour guests. I'm doing a caravaner's version of a rendang curry. I was inspired by Lee at the markets, but I'm putting my little spin on it. Let's get cracking. To prepare, Chef Macker grates some ginger, then dices chilli, garlic, onion, carrots, cherry tomatoes and potatoes and heats up some oil. So our first step is in with our aromatics. So the basis of every good curry is your onion, chilli, garlic and ginger. And now the main ingredient, the meat. And I'm using blade steak, it's a cheaper cut, great flavour, but it really, really deserves to be cooked for a long time because it's a bit tougher than the other cuts. Now in goes the randang curry base and two cans of coconut milk. This is the Australian version of meat and free veg. And finally our tomatoes. I reckon our guests are going to love this. Coming up, Tim is introduced to a few curious buffaloes and we show you how to win your very own Easy Trail caravan. Back in beautiful Mullaney, we're in full happy hour prep mode. So I'm off to rustle up a few party guests. So there's a few people camped here. I'm going to go and invite them. Hello. Permission to enter? <laughs> we'll see you there. No no Beauty. We'll we're having a happy hour party? Well, we'll okay. We'll see you there. Thank you very much. Now with all the guests and geese invited, here's how you can win a caravan to host your very own happy hour. There's no better way to see the real Australia than by caravan. So we're giving you the chance to win an Easy Trail Sejuna 15. This luxurious family van has been given the RV Daily Foodie Trails tick of approval. We think you'll love the comfortable king-size bed, the onboard bathroom and the functional outdoor kitchen for your very own foodie trails. Valued at $65,000, the Sejuna 15 has everything you need for your next adventure. All you have to do is bring the cheese and wine. To go into the draw to win this fantastic prize, head over to rvdaily.com.au. Before our happy hour party kicks off, Tim quickly nips out to pick up some buffalo mozzarella cheese. But first, he thought he'd better pay a little visit to these gentle giants. When you want to know where you're specialised, Cedar Street Cheesery Buffalo Mozzarella comes from. The milk comes from these guys, or girls, I should say, who have come in to say hello. Now back to the job at hand, Tim is catching up with Trevor from Cedar Creek Cheesery. Is that, um, it looks fantastic. Trevor is both an accomplished jazz trumpeter and an artisan buffalo cheese maker who makes everything by hand underneath his house. So I do everything in very small batches. After the buffalo curds have been standing for a while, it's cut into small cubes, heated to ideal temperature, the whey is poured off, and the mozzarella gets a little stretch. And as it stretches, you'll see the cheese start to glisten. And what does that tell you? It tells me it's stretching and glistening. 
<laughs> Next, the mozzarella is chopped, mixed, and finally... Okay. Here we go. That was quite a reveal. So dramatic, the changes. You're taking it from... It is a transformation. One, yeah, from one state to another and back again, deconstruct, back again. Try and eat it. Oh, wow. Well, Tim, you better get back here too sweet because we've got a party to throw. And it looks like Chef Macker is putting the final touches on his Rendang Caravan curry. And we're ready for our happy hour guests. It's happy hour time. Today's guests have travelled from Umundi, Kenilworth, Mullaney and from right here in Landsborough Pines Holiday Park to join us as we sink our teeth into the beautifully handcrafted cheeses gelato, chutneys and donuts collected from across the Sunshine Coast hinterland. And of course, to taste test Chef Macca's caravan curry. She's a one pot meal and a one cup dinner. How good is this? Okay, let's go and feed the happy, happy people. As always, it's a true pleasure to celebrate amongst fellow travellers and the amazing people creating new and delicious food across this region. See you next time. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs>